Hi and welcome to this eighth video on a GUI based approach to machine learning and sports betting. I was asked the other day whether this software could be used for other sports other than horse racing and so I thought I'd take a quick look at this, not that I'm a, uh, an expert in um, betting on other sports other than horse racing but I thought I'd take a look at tennis and this was prompted probably by a tweet that came up about a week ago from a guy who was uh, proposing a very simple system for beating the betting odds or bookmaker odds on tennis matches. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail on it, but I've used a, a subset of the features that he was proposing, uh, probably about 80%. He had some other caveats in there about how you treat um, the features and how you treat the data, but I've taken the, the essence of what he was saying, not to try and create a winning model, but just to illustrate how potentially this software could be used for another sport such as tennis. Okay, I've loaded up some tennis data which I got from uh, Joseph Buckdahl's site tennisdata.co.uk and I've arranged the data into a file. It's from years 10, 2010 to 2018 and it's uh, it consists of only non-ranked players in playing in, I think, first round matches, if memory serves me right, first round matches of uh, tournaments. Um, the idea of not having ranked players within the within the data wasn't made actually clear by the guy who tweeted, but he it was one of the provisions of making the the proposal he was putting forward a successful way of betting. But I'm more concerned with whether or not we can make this software adaptable and used for other sports. So I've loaded up the data and as you can see what we've got down here are uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 fields. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah, 8 fields. We've got the ID, the match ID which will ID the match and as you can see from over here each match has two rows which is obviously two players. And the data is fairly self-explanatory. This is the rank of the player for player number one. Uh, the, the points in the ranking points, tennis ranking points that this player has earned. Um, the rank difference between this player and the op and the player is pay the player that he's playing. Uh, the points difference between this player and the player he's playing. The odds at Bet365, at Pinnacle, and whether he, w he or she won or lost. And obviously this is the second player here. And as you can see, the points difference is the, the reverse of the points difference on this player because they're actually opposing each other. So he's this player is the favorite. Uh, in this case, the, the actual favorite lost. Now, I, I, I'd be surprised if uh, a model based on these very public available data items would prove to be profitable. So I'm not really concerned with trying to create a profitable model. Although it'd be interesting to see whether it improves on randomness, um, but we just want to see how we could use it. So this is this is how the data has been arranged. It's it's, it's rather like um, racing data. Uh, each line incorporates something about the opposition, which obviously the racing data we looked at so previously didn't. But that's essential for tennis because we need to weigh up the. Um, the opposition we could argue that's important in horse racing as well but it's certainly important in a tennis match i'm going to clear all the input features and then i'm just going to select all the relevant all the actual predictive potentially predictive features which is rank points rank difference and points difference down here is the, t the target variable win lose and then we need to switch well I've already done it actually I've, I've selected pinnacle as the price we're going to be uh, generating profit and loss on I'm, I'm told pinnacle is slightly more generous than bet365 on tennis I don't know if that's true but uh, it doesn't matter we'll just see how it performs so we're going to do a gradient boosting algorithm click on create the model just move this over I'm going to just speed this up a little bit, although it's not that slow, uh, by doing five full cross validation. Create the model. As you can see up here, betting everything would have lost us 5.32%. If we'd backed them with variable stakes on everything, we'd have lost 2.48%. And we can see that it's 
even with these basic input features it has slightly improved the, the variable return is 2.42 which is a little bit lower and the uh, flat stake return is quite a bit lower at 3.86 um, it's reporting that there is some brace skill on associated with this 0 0.08 and from down here we can see that the by far the most predictive feature in terms of importance is points difference which is probably not surprising to those of you who follow tennis okay we can do the usual stuff with this we can look at correlation plots see how they how they relate to each other we can see that points difference is by far here the biggest correlation or the greatest correlation with winning and we can also take a look at the calibration plot to see how that performs and we can see between these the main bulk of the ratings here between sort of 0 0.3835 and around just under 0 0.8 are fairly well calibrated with the um, actual win rate of those probabilities okay I don't want to dwell too much on looking at the results because that's not really the purpose of the video it's really just to show that there is some potential for using this software for tennis and possibly football as well. We'll probably have a look at football on another video. Uh, it just needs the data to be arranged in a way that will make sense, of course. And um, that's it for today then. So uh, if you've got any comments as usual, I'm happy to see comments underneath the video. And if you enjoyed the video or got something out of it, give me a thumbs up. Many thanks. Bye.